Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 18th November 2017. I am Sagan Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, and more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about link. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil, gold, and broad market ETFs using Q technical charts. We'll analyze broad market based on its internals. Then we'll look at sector and industry analysis using key graphs and ranking table. Along the way, we may review some of the trade ideas shared in our traders community and look for trades for the coming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel. I will try to answer them as I go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let us move to live system. We start with US oil. We are looking at USO using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. Together, we call this at a glance template, a template that helps us decide if there is a trading opportunity at the right edge of the chart. The last optimal long entry in US oil was at this cyan candle. We had discussed it in market roundup at that time. It hit profit target upper boundary in one or two days and since then it is going up. This week it tried to come down to value area and then went back up strongly on Friday. There is no trade signal at the right edge of the chart. It is in uptrend, having higher high, higher low. So the only possible trade setup would be go with flow, long trade setup. However, the weekly candle color is yellow. That does not allow us to take a go with flow, long trade setup. So at the right edge, there is no new trade opportunity. Those who entered long on this candle may still be continuing to hold partial position. If so, then the stop loss will be below the swing low using Q protection signal that is available in the Q hop off template. We are now looking at gold using at a glance template. Earlier, I had mentioned that if gold comes down a little bit and gives a cyan color candle, then we would have a go with flow long trade opportunity. That opportunity came this week on this candle. It gave a go with flow long trade setup and since then price is going up. Stop loss for this long opportunity would have been at this level just below recent low and target could be at upper boundary. The target has not been reached yet. However, it has already covered more than risk distance. That is the distance between entry price and stop loss. By Friday's high, 
goal had already covered the risk distance and a fast trader could book partial position. But the traders could continue to hold the position waiting for gold to hit the upper boundary line. Because we are already in a go with flow long trade setup in gold based on this candle, we would not like to take another entry based on Friday's candle. If we try to take a trade based on Friday's candle, then our stop loss will be pretty far compared to the potential profit. So our reward risk ratio will be less than one and in superior profit way, we try to avoid taking such trades. Before looking into broad market ETFs, let's have a look at broad market internals. Every week, we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ Composite Index on the left-hand side using weekly chart and NYSE Composite Index on the right-hand side, again using weekly chart. From the weekly candle chart, we can see that both NASDAQ and NYSE continue to be in uptrend. NYSE weekly charts candle color has turned yellow now for four successive weeks. This week, NYSE tried to go down, however, recovered well, shown by the long lower tail. NASDAQ on the other hand was stronger again compared to NYSE. It actually made yet another all time high. The internals that is new high low, advanced decline and up down volume continue to be weak over longer term, unable to surpass previous peaks. For this specific week, the internals are bullish all the six internals went up and all of them ended positive. So in summary, we conclude that the broad market indices continue to be in uptrend. NYSE is weaker than NASDAQ. Over longer term, the internals are weak and for this specific week, internals are bullish. This seems to show that the market is strong. However, when we look at broad market ETFs, that tell a different story. Let's have a look at that. We are looking at SPY using at a glance template. This week, we have changed the status to sideways market. We can see that in fact, SPY made a lower low in the daily chart. The highs continue to be at approximately the same level because it could not go higher for several weeks. We have changed the status of SPY from uptrend to sideways. And we can see that sideways move in the weekly chart as well. SPY has no valid trade setup at the right edge of the daily chart. When we look at activity in the weekly chart, we see that for two successive weeks, SPY fell with gradually rising activity. This is the same pattern that we can see in DIA. In DIA also, we have two successive down weeks with gradually increasing activity. The backdrop candle color in the weekly chart has turned bearish, that is magenta. In the daily chart, it has created a lower high and lower low. On Friday, we have a daily candle flow color 
of magenta that is bearish weekly backdrop candle color is also bearish magenta so in a way we can say that there is a go with flow short trade setup if somebody took such a trade at friday's close stop loss would be just above recent high at this level and one might attempt to book profit at lower boundary or once the risk distance is covered giving us a potential profit that is about the same as the potential risk from the relative performance line we see that dia is underperforming the market for several weeks now that further supports our decision of taking a possible go with flow short trade one thing to keep in mind that the go with flow short trade setup is supposed to be applied to a downtrending market at a minute level we can say that dia is actually in downtrend now with lower highs and lower lows however if we broaden the perspective a little bit we may say that dia now is in sideways market one may keep that in mind before taking any short trade using the go with flow trade setup dia and spy charts look very similar whereas qqq looks very different qqq is stronger than both spy and dia its weekly backdrop candle color continues to be bullish that is cyan now for 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 eight, eight weeks consecutive 8 weeks it is overbought as shown by the stretch signal on top of the weekly candle interestingly on friday qqq displayed a bearish headwind signal in the daily chart and it also formed a false upside breakout that is price tried to go above the watermark resistance level but came back below that though the weekly candle color is still bullish from the bearish headwind and the false upside breakout we have some bearish indication in qqq as well there is no q trade setup at the right edge of qqq IWM was the weakest of all the four broad market ETFs for a while. This week, over the last three days, it in fact recovered substantially. We can see that also from the relative performance line, tilting up strongly. However, the weekly backdrop candle color continues to be bearish. magenta for three successive weeks now in the daily chart we continue to have lower highs and lower lows so technically iwm is still in downtrend next week if iwm goes down from here it may give us a low risk go with flow short trade opportunity when we combine broad market internal analysis and broad market etf analysis we see that though the markets are strong overall there are signs of weakness coming from multiple etfs iwm has already been in downtrend for a while dia has a downtrend this week over a very short term period and spy qqq status has changed from uptrend to sideways looking at that 
long position holders in stocks which has significant profit may protect their profit using Q protection signal. Everybody may be cautious before entering long term. That is the conclusion we arrive by looking at broad market internals and broad market ETFs. When we look deeper into sector analysis and industry analysis, we see some interesting and major changes in the market. The sectors industries that were weak for a long time, some of them were defensive sectors are starting to gain strength. And the same is true for industries. And the industry sectors that were strong for a long time are starting to weaken. Every week, we look at 11 economic sectors and analyze them across three review periods. The red bar indicates performance of this week. The green bar, performance of one week prior to red bar. And the blue bar, represents performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Any bar coming to the right of the zero point indicates that the sector gained and a bar coming to the left of the zero line indicates that the sector declined. This week, seven of the 11 sectors gained Healthcare increased by a tiny percentage and four decline. Overall, this paints a bullish picture of the market at sector level. However, some fundamental changes are taking place in the market that we can discover from QH sector industry analysis. In a recent blog, I mentioned that it might not be the right time to take new long positions in information technology sector. That caution paid handsomely. In the previous week, information technology sector was unchanged and this week it turned negative. QH ranking for information technology sector declined very rapidly from one, the best performing rank, to eight, one of the worst performing rank. In fact, on Friday, information technology had the worst possible rank of 11. Consumer discretionary is a sector that is now gaining for three successive weeks. As discussed in these market roundups, using QH, you could catch the exact turning point of this sector and catch some attractive stocks at pendulum low with very narrow stop loss and large potential profit. Even now, you may look for such long opportunities and we will have further look into that when we study the industries. Energy as a sector dropped heavily. It reversed from the gain of previous two review periods to a significant loss. This loss happened in spite of US oils substantial recovery on Friday. You may gain further insight into the energy sector by drilling down into its industries using QH. Telecom is a sector that was languishing for long, long time. It gained this week Will it give rise to bottom catching by opportunities? Further study may be done using QH industry analyst and Q charts. And you will probably find some good bottom catching by opportunities 
at attractive valuation in this sector. We are looking at industries best performing over last five days. Out of the 10 best performing industries, six belongs to consumer discretionary and two belongs to consumer staples sector. No wonder that these two are the best performing sectors in this way. Let's have a look at that using Q edge. Every time we open Q edge, it analyzes 11 economic sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently for recent periods over 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and 1 day. For each of these review periods, it analyzes the performance of the sectors and industries assign rank one to the sector industry with strongest performance and a large number to the sector industry with the poorest performance. It also applies a heat map cyan to the strongest sector industry, magenta to the weakest sector industry and a color gradient to all the sector industries in between. The result is a ranking and heat map table that instantly tells us which sector or industry is strong over the primary analysis period of five days. And we can see instantly that consumer discretionary is the strongest this way and consumer staples is a close second. Looking to the right, we can also instantly identify that it was weak before both of these sectors. They were magenta before and turning cyan. These are the times that we may look for not only swing long opportunities, but also long term investment by opportunities in these sectors and related industries. Coming back to industries with best performance, laser products is an industry that is gradually strengthening after languishing for a long time. American Outdoor Brands Corp, AOBC, has optimal valuation in this industry. It has strong growth as well and is at watermark support in the weekly chart. AOBC may give very low risk, long entry opportunity in the coming week. Let us have a look at the laser products industry using QH, drill down into its stocks, identify American outdoor brands, and then use Q charts to identify that the stock is at watermark support level. In QH, we are looking at the sectors. We can sort them over our primary decision period of five days from smallest to largest. And we can see that consumer discretionary with rank one is the strongest sector. We can click the get components button to drill down into all the industries of this sector. When we drill down, we identify laser products. This is an industry that was magenta, that is weak over many months and it is gradually gaining strength. This week, it is actually the second best performing industries. That caught my attention and I drilled down into its stocks by clicking the get components button again. QH is retrieving data from Thomson Reuters icon or Metastock Zenith. It has identified 19 stocks. We can click the calculator button to retrieve data on all these stocks and calculate the vital statistics. 
it has completed the calculation we can see that aobc is a stock that has relative valuation score of 100 that is the best possible valuation score we only need to look at the color if the color is cyan then we know that the stock is optimally valued when we look at the growth columns that is eps and revenue growth over five year to one year periods we see that aobc is overall significantly stronger relative to its peer stocks so aobc in summary is a stock that has optimal valuation has robust growth and belongs to an industry laser products that was weak for long time and strengthening now these are the times that you may look for swing long as well as long term buy opportunities if you want to know the exact growth for aobc you may click the magnifying glass that is analyze button go to the vital analysis tab when we do that we see that aobc has pretty strong eps and revenue growth over last one year to five year period the last thing we need to check before considering taking a buy position is to look at aobc using q charts we are looking at aobc using at a glance template in the weekly chart aobc dropped sharply created a watermark support level tried to go up from there came back to the watermark support tried to go below that but closed above it this week creating a false downside breakout in the weekly chart it was accompanied by exertion at the same price level in the daily chart we see the same thing it tried to go below this watermark level but closed higher on friday the candle shape is indecisive so one would not like to take a long trade at the close of friday you may keep an eye on aobc to see if it gives a low risk long entry opportunity in the coming week another consumer discretionary sector industry that performed very well this week is textile apparel and luxury goods in this industry which is gradually strengthening fossil fosl is optimally valued and has a beautiful false downside breakout along with exertion in weekly chart fossil's weekly backdrop candle color has turned bullish that is cyan so we may look for potential long in fossil the other stock that is of similar interest is hbi it is also optimally valued has created a double bottom in the weekly chart at long term watermark support let's look at textile apparel and luxury goods industry in qh drill down into its stocks check fossil and hbi is fundamentals and look at these stocks charts using cube system in qh we see that apparel accessory and luxury goods is an industry that was weak earlier and is gradually turning into strength over our primary period of 5 days it is cyan that is bullish you can click the get components button to drill down into its stocks it is retrieving the stocks from the universe that is thomson reuters icon it has found 30 stocks we can click the calculator button to retrieve data for the stocks and calculate the vital statistics the calculation is complete and instantly using the color coding we see this stock fossil fosl is optimally valued it actually has the best possible relative valuation score of 100 growth is not 
good it's magenta or red that is weak relative to the peer stocks that is expected we usually do not expect optimal valuation and strong growth at the same time for bottom catching opportunities it is fine to have strong relative valuation score and weak growth another company in the same industry is hpi it also has cyan color in relative valuation and also internal valuation and on top of the strong valuation score hpi also has robust growth relative to the peer stocks it also pays a nice dividend of about three percent so looking at fundamentals we can immediately conclude that hbi is stronger than fossil both of these belonging to an industry apparel accessories and luxury goods that was weak before and is gradually turning into strength before actually making a buy decision we'd like to look up the stocks using q charts we are looking at fossil using at a glance template in the weekly chart it dropped significantly displayed a bullish headwind signal and went up for several weeks fossil then retested the watermark created by the bullish headwind one week before and this week closed above it creating a false downside breakout accompanied by very heavy activity that is a sign of potential exertion in the weekly backdrop chart it has also displayed a bull release signal in the daily chart it is already up somewhat from the recent low so we may not want to take a long position right now it would be nice if fossil comes down little bit and tilts up again giving us a low risk go with flow long trade opportunity or if fossil comes back all the way to the watermark support level and reverses from there probably creating a false downside breakout giving us a possible sideways market box long trade opportunity we are looking at hbi using at a glance template in february hbi created a low and went up substantially from there only to drop sharply back to the exact same level at the right edge of the chart hbi bounced up from a long term watermark support level accompanied by heavy activity which may be a sign of possible exertion in the daily chart we see that hpi dropped after earnings and then moved sideways for a while on friday it created a bull release signal and the candle color turned bullish green the weekly is still magenta so there is no box long trade setup if hpi continues to go up next week we may consider taking a long position using the bounce long trade setup we are looking at industries with worst performance energy industries are the biggest losers of this week seven of the 10 worst performing industries belong to energy sector though energy sector industries are biggest losers we saw that oil reversed upward on friday keeping that in mind it may be prudent to see oil's direction next week before looking for possible short trade in these of industries industrial conglomerate is an industry that declined considerably it was largely due to the more than 11 percent drop in ge which also slashed its dividend when drilling down into industrial conglomerates industry i couldn't identify any good short opportunity as the industry weakened we are not going to look for any 
long opportunity in this industry. Every week, we also study the industries with biggest rank gain and biggest rank declines. They often show us which industries are going to outperform and underperform the market respectively in the coming weeks. We are looking at industries with biggest rank gain this week. Rank gaining industries are spread across diverse sectors. Wireless communication services was lagging for a long time and now is the best rank improver. TDS is a stock in this industry that is optimally valued and went up after giving a bounce long signal on Thursday, 16th November. Let's look at the wireless communication services industry. In Kiwet, drill down into its stocks, identify TDS, look at TDS fundamental using QEdge, and then look at TTS using Q charts. In QH, we can start from sector analysis. We see telecom services sector was very weak for many months and it rapidly gained rank from 11 to 7 to 3 and even 1 over one day period. These are the times when we start to look for bottom catching long opportunities. In fact, in several market roundups, seeing that it was worst ranker over many months, I had been mentioning that soon we will start to look for bottom catching buy opportunities. That time might have come. We can click the components button to drill down into the industries for this sector and instantly we can see that for telecom sector industries, all of them were very weak over last 12 months period and now gradually improving rank. The best performer among these industries is wireless telecom services with cyan color over our primary review period of five days. We can click on the components button again to get the stocks in this industry. Q8 has identified seven stocks. We can click the calculator button to retrieve data on these seven stocks and calculate the vital statistics. From the color coding, we can instantly see that TDS is the only stock which has good valuation, optimal valuation, the relative valuation score 79 but we may just look at the color coding it is in cyan color growth is not good but that is fine we don't expect optimal valuation and strong growth at the same time it pays a reasonable dividend of 2.38 percent so tds is one of the best valued stocks in this industry wireless telecom services which was weak for a long time, but is strengthening very fast. Before making a buy decision, the last step is to look at the Q charts that will complete this top-down analysis. We are looking at TDS using at a glance template. In the month of March, TDS made a low and went up from there. And then it dropped coming down to the exact watermark level that was created by previous low in the weekly chart. For two successive weeks, it tried to break below the watermark support level but failed. This week, it reversed strongly, giving us a bullish shape candle. The candle color is still bearish, that is magenta. We see heavy activity in the weekly chart pointing to possible exertion. In the daily chart, TDS dropped sharply. Some of the drop was associated with earnings result. On Thursday, 
it reversed with a bull release signal. That was a possible bounce long trade opportunity. The entry could be made at close of Thursday with stop just below recent low and profit could be booked once the risk distance is covered. On Friday, it has already gone up though the risk distance has not been covered yet. Next week, if it hits the profit target, then at least partial profit could be booked. At that time, if both the industry as well as the stock remains strong, then there would be no reason to exit full position. Partial position could be carried using Q protection stop to protect profit and make the trade risk free from that time onward. This is a live illustration of how Q edge can help us drill down from sector to industry to stocks fundamental and then finally look at the stocks charts to catch the very low of a fundamentally strong stock just as it starts to create a bottom and move up from there. Regional banks is another industry that gained rank rapidly. This industry was lagging for a long time. In this industry, CUBI and FBP has completed false downside breakouts along with exertion. So you may look for potential buy opportunities in these stocks. Let's again start with QH. Look at regional banks industry, drill down to its stocks, identify CUBI and MBP, check their fundamentals and finally look at their charts. In QH industry analysis, we can filter by all the banks and we can see regional banks, which was somewhat weak earlier, Magenta, and over our primary review period of five days, it has gained rank considerably. The current rank color is cyan, so the industry is strong. And from the paste column, 10 days to five days, we see that over this week, it has gained rank very fast. You can think of this space as a kind of acceleration. So regional banks is accelerating fast and is strong now, shown by the sand color over five days period. You can drill down to its stocks by clicking the get components button. Go to the vital tab. It is retrieving the data from Thomson Reuters icon or Metastack Zenith. It has found 89 stocks. Click the calculator button to get the data on all the stocks and calculate vital statistics. The calculation is complete. What we are looking for is stocks with optimal valuation. One way of doing that is to click the magnifying glass, that is the investigate button. Go to vital analysis tab, sort the stocks on relative valuation score. So the stocks with optimal valuation come to the top. We can see CUBI is a stock that has cyan color in both relative and internal valuation and its growth is also cyan. That is, it is strong in terms of growth relative to its peers. Therefore, CUBI has a nice combination of optimal valuation and strong relative growth. In the same industry, FBP is another stock that has cyan color, both for relative valuation and internal valuation. Its growth is not as good as CUBI. So overall, we may conclude that fundamentally, both of these stocks, CUBI and FBP, are optimally valued, but when we look at growth, CUBI overall is more attractive than FPP.
last step in this top down analysis would be to look at q charts for these two stocks we are looking at fbp using at a glance template in the weekly chart it tried to go below the watermark support level but reversed strongly this week with heavy activity showing possible exertion that created a false downside breakout in the daily chart the false downside breakout was completed on this yellow candle which was accompanied by heavy activity as well one could take a long trade right at the close of this candle putting stop just below recent low and booking profit once the risk distance is covered the risk distance is not covered yet if it goes up next week one may book at least partial position and use q protection signal to protect profit on the remaining position the other regional bank we saw with strong fundamentals is cubi it also dropped sharply tried to go below the watermark support in weekly and this week it reversed sharply closing just above the watermark support level thereby completing a false downside breakout the false downside breakout was accompanied by heavy activity in the weekly chart showing possible exertion in the daily chart by the time the false downside breakout completed it was already up from the recent low so we would not like to take any long position at the close of friday the stop loss will be somewhat far away if cubi comes down a little bit next week and then tilts up again it may give us a very low risk buy opportunity using go with flow long trade setup the other possibility could be if cubi comes all the way to the watermark support level reverses from there that will give us a sideways market box long trade opportunity right now we would not like to take any long trade in cubi last thing we look at is the industries with biggest rank drop five of the worst rank decliners belong to real estate sector specialized trade is the worst rank decliner in this industry the stock land dropped after displaying bearish headwind on 19th october is bearish headwind beautifully captured the top with the reversal signal let's look at specialized rates industry in qh drill down to its stocks identify land land and then finally look at land using q charts we can start with sector analysis again for a complete cycle of top down analysis the real estate sector had been patchy it was somewhat magenta starting to be cyan magenta again cyan again magenta cyan and now magenta again over five days period so for this week it is clearly weak also from the pace column we see that it became weak very fast with the biggest deceleration so it is weak and it dropped in rank very fast that caught my attention so you could drill down into the sectors industries by clicking the get components button we have all the real estate industries here now we can see specialized rate it was somewhat cyan before but turned 
heavily magenta over five days period. Also, we can see from the paste column that it dropped rank very fast. That is deceleration was very fast. These are the industries where we would like to look for short opportunities. So I drill down using the get components button. It is retrieving data from Thomson Reuters icon or Metastock Zene. It has found 33 stocks. We can click the calculator button to retrieve data on these stocks and calculate the vital statistics. The calculation is complete. We can identify the land stock. From the color coding, we can instantly see that the stock LAND is having extreme valuation, both for relative valuation score and internal valuation score overvalued because the colors are in magenta. Earnings growth is also not that good. The revenue growth is strong relative to its peers. We identified LAND as an overvalued stock in an industry specialized trades. The industry was strong before and is weak now. Before taking a short trade, we would like to Check the chart. We are looking at land using Q at a glance template. In the weekly chart, LAND created a watermark level at the high of this earnings week. Price dropped, tried to recover to the same level, created a very clear false upside breakout on this yellow candle. That candle shape was also very bearish. Since then, LAND is not able to go up. Its backdrop candle color has turned magenta for four weeks now. In the daily chart, we see that at the very top, it displayed a bearish headwind signal. That is again one reason when we see the bearish headwind signal in daily chart, we are careful about existing long position. We usually protect profit using Q protection signal. Sometimes if the industry is weak or weakening, we may close the entire position. That would be a very good decision. The bearish headwind caught the very top. After displaying the bearish headwind, LAND dropped, came to the yellow direction line support, tried to recover from there, and after the earnings, dropped again. Right now, we would not like to take any trade in LAND. It is inside a triangle pattern, bounded by resistance memory at the top, support memory at the bottom. If LAND goes up, hits the resistance memory and reverses from there, then we may be able to take a short trade with minuscule risk. You may keep an eye for that. Overall, from these analysis, you may see that though the broad market is continuing higher, the broad market ETFs has started to show sideways move rather than being in uptrend, which was true for many months. And from sector industry analysis using QH, you can see that there is an interesting rotation going on. Weak sectors industries are turning into strong sector industries and those which were strong earlier are weakening. Using QH, you can identify such sector industry or rotation in real time. Check the constituent stocks fundamentals using QH. And then finally, look at the stocks charts to find optimal entry opportunities, both in the long direction as well as in the short direction. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for joining.
I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.